right, guys, listen up. We stick to my plan, and we won't fail. Fan out in three, two, one. Not the elevator. <sighs> That was a clip from Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, one of the newest movies to hit theaters. Yeah, it was number one at the box office, but will it make you say Kawabanga? Here to tell us is our resident movie critic, Will Loper. What did you think of the movie? Well, you know, it pains me to say this, especially since mm. my first pair of shoes were Mutant Ninja Turtle <laughs> slip-ons. But if you're looking for turtle power, you'll find more action looking at the snapping turtle section of your local zoo Ooh. than this movie. Oh. So the movie begins with journalist April O'Neil, this time portrayed by Megan Fox, trying to get the big scoop instead of having to work fluff pieces like trampoline exercises. Her break comes when she stumbles on four gigantic turtle things in the subway fight scene. These are, of course, the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. They find out that a bad guy is going to pull the old release poisonous gas on the city trick and hold the city ransom, so it's up to April and the turtles to stop him. Now, the first problem is that the movie shows things from April's point of view, and the movie is more about her than the turtles. Now, this is a movie that has an incredibly unique set of characters that is guaranteed no other movie has. That's pizza-eating, talking teenage turtles. So it should use them as much as it can, instead of, say, the journalist who wants to make a big break that we've seen in countless <laughs> other movies. She's important in the universe, for sure, but maybe not the main character important. And every five minutes, the audience also gets a break from more exposition. The beginning, Splinter, the giant mutated rat, explains the turtles' origin story. A couple scenes later, Megan Fox explains their origin story again. Later in the movie, the bad guy who helped create the turtles explains their origin story Again, there's too much talking, not enough action. The action that is there is typically really dark, hard to see. It's all shot mm -hmm. with a very shaky mm. cam. I, I didn't feel like I ever really saw the turtles, mm -hmm. but maybe that's a good thing because they are pretty terrifying to look at, kind of like roided out mini hulks. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. There is one cool action scene down the side of the movie, but it's just not enough. Is it me, or do they seem a little bit more buff this time around? They are they incredibly, yeah, are they've they been juicing? lifting. They're, I think they're juicing for sure. <laughs> Definitely some kind of... Oh, well, you know, my three-year-old granddaughter loved uh -huh. it. So maybe it's for, you know, she and my daughter went, and she just came back saying, it's a super-duper movie. So, mm -hmm. you know, from a three-year-old perspective, even though she says there was a little mm -hmm. bit too much fighting. But. That is, and it's interesting. I, I mean, it's kind of dark. It's got a PG-13 rating, mm -hmm. so that is surprising. I would say maybe it's a little violent for children, wow. but okay. if she enjoyed it that's yeah, good she was fine. Okay, yeah, so what yeah. did you give this so I gave this out of story quarter of a pizza not that great uh -huh. uh, action a little bit better half a pizza <laughs> okay. CGI is just absolutely terrifying uh -huh. that may it have never nightmares. got delivered I suppose <laughs> it no. never got yeah. delivered no wow. so I gave it two out of five and there you see him without his mask mm -hmm. really oh what is that thing yeah right. I don't right. even know. Huh. so, so right. what's up next what's the, what's the next movie next I saw boyhood now this has been out for a little while it's slowly been getting a wider release mm -hmm. finally came to mass since playing at Sundance began filming in 2002 with a seven-year-old boy his mm -hmm. sister and his divorced mother and father played by Patricia Arquette and Ethan Hawke for a couple days every year for the next 12 years, they would get together, film another scene out of their lives, all the way up to when 18-year-old Mason goes off to college. Now, even if the movie wasn't any good, this is a crazy, ambitious concept, and it breaks cinematic ground just for that reason alone. However, the movie is easily the best of the year so far. Part of the reason is how real it all is. The relationships, the conversations, the things Mason does every year of his life, they all ring true. And the movie plays out as a memory of life almost. Major things happen in his life, but there's no one big thing. It's sort of a cumulative effect of his life, and, you know, that's how life really is. Mm -hmm. hmm. Yeah, so I've, I've I, heard good things about this yeah, movie. Yeah, if there's, if there's one it. movie you see this year, it's that one only criticism. Really? It wasn't longer. I, I want to see his entire wow. life. Oh, wow. And it's it's amazing how they act. It took 12 years. I mean, yeah. they got this. Yeah, they got these folks and together. All the and, actors are growing older. Yeah. You don't you don't need prosthetic wrinkles yeah, and yeah, makeup. Yeah. It's them it's just, getting older. Right, in real life. Mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So what did you What's get this one? Well, it finally happened. He's seen it here first. Really? Perfect. Five <gasps> out of five. Get out. Really? So, Shut up. Wow. Seriously? A five out of five? Five? Wow. Go so see this it. is a must see. This is a must see. It's at Sundance. It's at Sundance right now. Okay. So. All right. All right. Charlotte, this afternoon. Make your plans. Let's it's going to rain, it, right? <laughs> Perfect. Okay, and so next weekend, you're, you, you know, you keep going. Okay, <laughs> keep so. going. Expendables <laughs> 3 and The Giver. So. Okay. Oh, wow. There you go. Right. Oh, Meryl Streep. Meryl okay. Streep. I love Meryl Streep. Well, yeah. then. Oh, that'll we'll be see. interesting. Yeah. Thank you. Yep.